You're listening to another episode of the Just Go Bike Podcast. That's AKA Murph. And that's AP. And this is the podcast where we talk about cycling just for the fun of it. With tales from all over the nation, come for the bikes, stay for the fun, and leave with a smile. Well, hey, Murph. Happy March. Hey, how's it going, AP? Oh, it's fantastic. And we all know that March is the home to the best holiday of the year. My birthday? Yes, and... (laughs) St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. Day. <laughs> I know. Back yeah. when I um, had a job where I went to an office every day, March was traditionally the month that I wore green every single day. Oh. And uh, yeah, I don't now because a lot of what I do is at home, um, but we could pretend I'm wearing green today. Well, yeah, actually, I love that idea. And I'm at the office and I'm wearing green. So. Oh. Maybe you could start a new trend of wearing green all month to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Well, I don't know if I have 31 green shirts, but I think (laughs) I could maybe make it work. (laughs) So while we're on the topic of clothing, let's talk about bike clothing. Okay. So AP, do you have a certain way that you dress when you get out on your bike? Well, yeah, I mean... I love the more fun, the better. I have a lot of very colorful bike jerseys from, I mean, mostly rag bri themed or like pigtails or big row or, you know, different uh, bike rides that we've been a part of, ride the Rockies or whatever. But I like the co- more colorful, the better. And do you like, I don't know, I guess I'll say it this way. It, it's kind of like any sport. Like when I get ready to go for a bike ride, I have a specific section of clothing that I wear, you know, whether it's um, temperature management type fabric, you know, like um, wicking fabric. But I definitely have a section of clothing that I wear when I go biking. How about you? Oh, absolutely. I have a special drawer. <laughs> well, I'll be lying if I said I only had one drawer, but right. I have an area <laughs> of my wardrobe where I put all my bike clothes. And yeah, I always do um, jersey shorts and then whatever layers on top that I need to have because for me, the jerseys are a must. Yeah. Gotta have those pockets. Yeah. I, I mean, I wear a lot of, especially when it gets really warm out, just a lot of wicking tank tops, but I'm a big fan of jerseys because of those back pockets. Mm-hmm. You can put, I don't know, a lot more stuff than you think, you know, whether it's nutrition or your phone or wallet or things like that. But As far as padded shorts go, I'd say I wear them about half the time I ride. No way. That's crazy. I 100% always wear padded shorts. How could you not? Seriously? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I might, maybe my tush is just sensitive. (laughs) Yeah, I guess. But I, I go on a lot of social rides and they're typically at slower speeds. So honestly, Mm. you know, I don't feel like I need padded shorts. And really the more that your booty spends on the saddle, the more time your booty spends on the saddle, the better conditioned it gets and it can handle those like pressure points. So, um, yeah, I used to never wear padded shorts, but then when I did my ride across America, I knew that, you know, if you did happen to get a pressure point sore or a saddle sore, like I had to keep riding every single day for 60 yeah. some days. So I'm like, all right, yeah. I got to wear padded shorts. And I'm glad I did. But then it kind of, you know, it, then I wasn't as conditioned the rest of the year. So I <laughs> I had to do a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess this is like you get indirectly telling me that I need to train more, which is true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I always like the bike shorts. I like my little cushy uh, primal shorts the best. But anyway, on the back to the Jersey side of things on rag Bride this year, we on Sunday, it's designated as throwback Jersey day. So it's going to be fun to see what people decide to wear. Yes. Okay. So before we started recording, I was looking through, I have one, I have this huge walk-in closet and one whole wall is all jerseys. Mm. And it's just like anything in my closet. Like I only wear probably 10% of what's in my closet, but a lot Mm. of it I have emotional attachment to. This might be too much information, but it's true. But I did find um, some jerseys from way back when um, I was telling you about it. The one that says XXIX. So I'm going to do a little bit of thinking here. And I think that was Ragbri 29, Mm. but I do not recall what year it was. Oh, you should ask me to look that up. (laughs) 
Oh. Uh, Rag Bride 29. I think it says 2001 on the jersey, but it's, like you mentioned earlier, it's super colorful mm. and says Rag Bride big letters. It also says Ride Right on the sleeve. So I'm kind of oh. thinking about, like you mentioned, throwback jersey day. I may have yeah. to wear this on that day. Yeah, my favorite throwback Rag Bride jersey is from 2009. And don't ask me to say what the, I think it would have been. Okay, I said don't ask me, but now I'm wondering. I think it would have been 37-ish. Okay. But anyway, it's got pie on it. Oh. All different kinds of pie. And that one's my favorite throwback jersey just because it was such a fun concept. It says, like, blueberry, apple, cherry, blah, blah, blah. It's so much fun to have um, all the pie on, on your shirt. Yeah. So that's one of my favorites. But, oh, yeah. Um, it's cool. I, like, oh, go ahead. Regardless, though. Always got to wear a primal jersey. They're my favorites with the quality and the way that they stand up over time. Yeah. And that's not just to add, I have a lot of old jerseys. <laughs> so I happen to know that they really hang up, hold up. Oh, yeah. I love all of my primal jersey. My padded shorts, when I do wear padded shorts, are always primal because they don't, mm. like, they fit properly so that you don't have your skin rubbing and that's, you know, that's the kiss of death when your shorts are either too big or too tight. And, you know, you have all those pressure points. Um, actually, any anywhere your bike connects, right? So yeah. your, your yeah. Um, the pads of your hands, your feet and your booty, any anywhere your bike touches are potential issue areas. You know, a lot of people will say, oh, my pinky toes always fall asleep or my... Um, my mm -hmm. hands fall asleep while I'm biking, but also where your butt hits your seat, if you're not seated properly or you're wearing the right clothes, that will cause friction all day. And friction down there is not a good thing. No. The only friction I want is between my bike tire and the ground. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So on a related topic, now we're on our third related topic, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Today, uh, we have a fun parrot talk. So, AP, tell us what it's going to be about. I'm going to squawk all about it, and today is going to be all about fashion. Ooh. I don't know a lot about fashion, but I do know a lot about bike fashion. So, I've collected a bunch of different articles that have, well, they've been written through the years in the Des Moines Register about rag -ride fashion. So, just a little selection for you, um, and I'll go more into it just here in a little bit. Okay, well, let's get to it. Well, hello again, listeners. This is Andrea, and that's right, that means this is Parrot Talk. I'm squawking back at you after a several month sabbatical uh, to read you some more Des Moines Register articles from Ragbri's past. And I have some doozies for you today. Uh, last weekend, I had the joy of riding with Kathy Murphy and a few of my other biking buddies. And while we were out biking, Murph said, hey, I have some props that I like to bring out. If I do that, would you wear them? And if you know Kathy Murphy, if she asks you about props, you say yes. And it turned out that her props were some of those like fake mustache disguises where it has the little glasses and the, the fake nose and the little Groucho Marx mustache. They were super cute, and it really got me thinking about different fashions that people wear while biking. Not that people really wear the little Groucho glasses while biking, but people have all sorts of fun little costumes and ways to dress up and ways to celebrate cycling that aren't just plain old bike shorts. So I did a deep dive into the Register Archive and looked up three different articles, all talking about rag by fashion to some degree or another. Some of them don't really talk about it that much, but they had little snippets in them that I thought you would find enjoyable. And I wanted to provide a range of different columnists as opposed to just John Karras or Donald Call this time. So without further ado, my first article comes from Wednesday, July 30th, 1980. And that is Ragbrite 8, which was 470 miles. So a nice solid Ragbrite for back in the day. And the title of this article is Rag Bri Dress and Other Short Subjects by Dave Brown. And I'm not acquainted with Dave, but he's a register staff writer. So, and I did see a couple different articles by him in the archive. So thanks, Dave. Um, this one comes from Perry, Iowa. 
The Ragbri thousands swarmed stylishly onward Tuesday, leaving folks from Carroll to Perry talking about the bikers' fashions, or lack thereof. In the forefront of the Register's annual Great Bicycle Ride Across Iowa's fashion show was Steve Heer of Dubuque. And Steve, I apologize if I have mispronounced your last name. Here, a tall, string bean sort of person, but hardy, as are all the Ragbri 8 riders, was wearing quote-unquote poor man's bicycling shorts, straight from JCPenney. 50% polyester, 50% cotton. Boxer shorts. Underwear. White with a small blue pattern. Over these, he wore a pair of gym shorts, blue and red. Other riders wear genuine cyclist shorts, nearly knee-length, that have chamois, a soft leather, sewn into the crotch. They can cost up to $30 a piece. Here said you could buy three pairs of his boxer shorts for $4 or $5 at any penny store, and they're as good as bike shorts. Since they poke out quite a way below his gym shorts, his penny's undergarment has drawn much comment, he said. About 50 or 60 kidding me and give me a lot of compliments. But here is only one of 5,000 to 10,000 on this ride, who knows for certain, and all have adopted their own modes of dress or undress. All male or female, wear shorts. Men and boys wear everything from the costly, genuine bike shorts to gym shorts to cut-off jeans to brief swimsuits. There is an abundance of sunburnt skin. Women follow suit, so to speak, covering the upper torsos with t-shirts and halters. If there are 5,000 riders here, there must be 4,000 different t-shirts. About 1,000 are ragbri shirts. One, an apparently treasured relic from the 1973 Ragbri trip. But there were others. One from the Mangy Moose Saloon in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Another advertising Kretschmer Wheat Germ. One said Biggie Bank Bike Race. And another Norwegian Caribbean Lines. Ellen Thornwall, originally of Slater and now of Loveland, Colorado, was wearing a baseball-style cap with a pair of yellow foam rubber lightning bolts. She said it was her speed of lightning hat. Thornwall said she wore the cap to class up our act a little bit. Besides, she said, turning around on her head, going downhill, you look like a Norseman. Willa Dean Yankee, this is not an alias of Muscatine, sported a t-shirt from Bemidji State University in Minnesota, where she studied this summer. It depicted three beavers intent upon drinking. Why did she wear it Tuesday? I thought those little beavers looked like most of the bike riders, she said. Yankee made this comment in the midst of the Ragbri invasion of the Rippy Tap, where they ran out of keg beer temporarily. Rippy is not very far down the road from Cooper, which is not incorporated and it has only 51 residents. But it was Cooper where bikers left their hearts. There were food stands with sandwiches, lemonade, iced tea, fresh fruit, pop, and 2,000 hot dogs fresh out the barbecue grill and only 50 cents apiece. The food stands were being run by the Methodist Church, the Franklin Township 4-H, Jefferson High School students sponsoring two foreign exchange students, and a booster club for area wrestlers. Most of the riders arrived late in the morning and early in the afternoon. The road through town was jammed with bikes. A semi-trailer truck driver was told to go around. The bike riders couldn't believe how friendly Cooper's 51 residents were. While Steve here posed with his JCPenney underwear for an overall area resident armed with a camera, he said, This is great. It's amazing. I love it. It's spectacular. We've been waiting for miles and miles for this town. As an example, David Moss of Marshalltown dropped 80 bucks in cash, folded inside a personalized check, and clipped it with a bobby pin. Laura Holtz found it. Sheriff Kenneth Boltz was there, according to Larry Monthel, a Cooper resident. The biker was chased down about four miles out of town and got his cash back. His old eyes just glowed, Montel exclaimed. A public address system blared out songs. One was the old Woody Guthrie favorite, This Land is Your Land. While Montel explained why the Cooper folks went to so much trouble for the bike riders. This is just what this country needs, said Montel, a farmer, indicating the thousands of bicycle riders, all apparently enjoying themselves. If we had more of this, we could solve most of our problems. The Cooper folks went to the trouble, he said, because basically, we just wanted the fellowship and to have a lot of fun. The riders pedaled to Cooper after spending the night in Carroll, where they swam in the slitty pool, 
kept the topless dancers at Aussie's Tavern on their toes until after 1 a.m., and listened to bluegrass music at the band shell in the campground. But all during Tuesday's ride, as usual, the ragbri crowd was tempted to stuff itself. Seven miles outside Coon Rapids, Fran Sherburn gave away donuts she had made the night before, and coffee and ice water to wash them down. The Bayard Lions Club sold drinks, fruit, and candy, not to be outdone by the Carol J.C.'s, who had watermelon at 25 cents a slice. Just before Cooper, the Business and Professional Women's Club of Jefferson had drinks for sale. And down the road from them, Jim Andrew of Jefferson had set up his bicentennial-built cannon. We wanted to make headlines, Andrew said. Something like, farmers shoot bikers across Iowa. (laughs) Three miles outside Rippey, the Yale Jamaica Bagley Education Association was raising scholarship money with cookies and other goodies. Others shamelessly overfeeding the mob were groups from the Rippey United Methodist Church, the Spring Valley Winners 4-H Club of Dallas County, and many others. Today it's on to Webster City, 67 miles away. The people along the route can take notes on the current fashions. So that's really fun to just kind of hear how things are so similar today and that there's a million bazillion different ragbri t-shirts and a lot of old ones that are really cool. But I don't know how many people we see today riding in jean shorts or speedos, per se. Um... I thought that was pretty cute. And the underwear thing <laughs> is very creative. I don't know if I would compare them to bike shorts and you would be lucky nowadays to get a pair for 30 bucks. So that was my first article about Rag by Fashion. This next article is written by John Karras and Chuck Offenberger and it comes from July 26, 1985. And it does take a little while to get to the fashion piece of things. But I thought it was a cool article and a cool description of a day where riders were able to ride to Cedar Falls and get to go inside the Unidome from the UNI Panthers. So it was a really neat experience for these riders. So just bear with me on the fashion theme, but I hope you enjoy this article as much as the first. After four days of getting reacquainted with each other, it was clear Thursday that Ragbright and the folks along the way in Iowa are falling in love with each other all over again. And, oh, what a day for it along the 89-mile route from Mason City to Waterloo. The weather conditions, complete with tailwind, were nearly ideal, lifting the spirits of the bicyclists as well as the people at the rural rest stops. When have there ever been more of them on farms than there were Thursday? And in the towns. Bright and early in the morning, there was Glenn Riggins sitting out in his farmyard west of Green with his five-piece pickup band playing country tunes and telling country tales for a constant crowd of at least a couple hundred bikers. The pickers and strummers were all regulars at jam sessions each Wednesday from 7 to 10 at Bill Heisman's garage in Parkersburg. Bill, I definitely pronounced your last name wrong. Sorry about that. For the cyclists, they played such tunes as the church in the wild wood deep in the heart of texas and give me that old time religion and in green there's a somewhat stern sign posted on the edge of town that says no peddlers but on this day there was an additional sign tacked below it someone more worried about hospitality than spelling had posted except for ragbri and we peddled by grinning jerry ridgeton a burlington city councilman and veteran ragbriar is a member of the Bike Burlington Club. He said his father-in-law, who has a farm just outside of Finchford, was staging a pit stop for all of Jerry's fellow club members, offering them free sweet corn. And Gary Moeller, also of Burlington, reported that Iowans along the way were as friendly and giving as ever when he'd pedal up and ask them for their seed corn caps. I collect the things, said Moeller. I've got 42 of them so far on this year ride. I'll probably wind up with even more than the 132 I got last year. He even has a little trailer behind his bicycle in which to carry them. Officials at the Unidome at the University of Northern Iowa in Cedar Falls provided one of the day's highlights, allowing cyclists to ride right through the dome, play basketball, take showers, and even camp inside if they wanted. Several clubs accepted the camping offer. The ragbriers were warned by UNI students posted at the entrance to the dome that they had to dismount and walk their bikes through the door since the whoosh coming out of the air-supported dome would have been enough to knock most of them down. 
And we can't forget the friendship shown in Shell Rock, where the Reverend Dennis Gilbert and members of the United Methodist Church were offering free music by a swing band, hand-squeezed lemonade, and uh, often burgers, which they advertised were made from fresh ground chuck. <laughs> and you have to remember, one of the authors of this article is Iowa boy Chuck Offenberger. Reports are coming in of examples of hospitality and trust from earlier days, too. Marie Jorgensen of Fort Dodge was working at a cookie stand outside of Mallard Monday at the Dale Anderson Farm. Up came a little boy on the ride, saying he'd sure like a cookie and a drink, but he had just discovered that he left his billfold at some specific place in Emmitsburg that morning. Jorgensen told the youngster to wait while she jumped in her car and made the 30-mile round trip, using back roads so she wouldn't interfere with other riders, to pick up the wallet and bring it to the boy. Dan and Holly Reiser of Colorado Springs, Colorado, are riding with two other couples from that city. Wednesday night in Mason City, they are going to eat at Cornerstone Restaurant. They told Jan Wilkins, who is running the place, that they had run out of cash and asked that they could use credit cards. No, said Wilkins, but she would trust them to send her a check when they got back home. Iowans, you have indeed been magnificent to us. And it was obvious that Waterloo was going to be just as gracious. There was a fantastic lineup of entertainment scheduled from 2 p.m. until 9 p.m. in the main campground at Bontrager Park. It had everything from folk to classical. A wind trio was playing a Vivaldi concerto as Grandpa Ragbri, a.k.a. Karis, arrived, warming his old heart to no end, to rock music. There was an ascension of hot air balloons planned and a two-on-one basketball game pitting the two of us against Molly Tittaback, a phenomenal sophomore to be at Waterloo Columbus High School. Later, the merchants of Crossroads Shopping Center were hosting a concert by High Heel and the Sneakers, a red-hot rock band from Omaha, Nebraska, that endeared itself to Ragbriars last summer at the stop in Shenandoah. Ragbri organizers in Waterloo and Cedar Falls were proving wrong the old notion that 8,000-some bicyclists and city traffic can't mix. They picked a route that dipped through Cedar Falls, down south, then east into Waterloo. They staffed it well with police officers, and everything kept moving. The oldest person on the ride? It must be Henry Braffhart, 83, in Orange City, who was riding with his wife, Leona, 68. Ragbri fashion is running a little odd, as usual. One of the real rages this year, especially among the young, is to wear men's boxer shorts over their tight black bicycle shorts. And there's 15-year-old Brian Larson of Worthington, Minnesota, who was already wearing a mohawk haircut. He didn't think that was quite enough, so Wednesday night he went to a Mason City beauty shop and had it dyed red. Saturday's conclusion of Ragbri 8 will leave about 25 riders with a transportation headache, as well as the usual assortment of aches and pains. Clinton Airport manager Gerald Parker said the riders had reservations on an American Central flight to Chicago, Illinois, the financially troubled airline suspended operations Wednesday night. What a traveler. Lee Hill, 16 of Bagley, arrived home late Sunday from a 17-day trip with other members of a Methodist youth group to the Soviet Union. He was bicycling on Ragbri on Tuesday. Did he even have time to get over the jet lag? I honestly don't know, he said. I'm out here in the rain, sun, and heat all the time, pedaling hard on my bicycle, so it's hard to tell what's jet lag and what's being worn out. So that's my second article. I hope you liked it. And isn't that funny that people were wearing boxer shorts with bike shorts again about, I don't know, five years later? That's awesome. <laughs> now that is something I think we should bring back for Ragbri 50 for fun because these days they have even more fun patterns on boxer shorts, etc. And I do like the addition of wearing bike shorts underneath of them because I don't think boxer shorts have too much padding. So I love that. I mean, I guess and then there's the age-old question, boxers or briefs. Well, that's up to you, dear riders. I think the briefs would go great over bike shorts as well, but please, for the love of Jeebus, do not wear just briefs because that is going to be painful. All right, so my final article for today is about 15 years in the future from the last article, and it is called Fashion Trend, Stylish Comfort, and it's by Sarah Baker, who is a registered staff writer, um, and this article is all about fashion, so I thought it would be a good way to cap off this fashion-themed episode. Strike a pose. 
All right. Fashion trend, stylish comfort. And I don't know if anyone has really ever said the words fashion trend and rag bright in the same sentence before this article was published. So, <laughs> you know, write that one down in your diary. Tattoos, tan lines, and loincloths adorn rag bright writers. And this one comes out of Greenfield, Iowa. Fashion statements on rag bright are as prevalent as bikes, pork chops, and sunburns. Everywhere that I can see, there's a different look. In Greenfield Monday afternoon, hundreds of brave souls took their attire beyond the limits. For those wanting to see more than just a bike ride, there was an eyeful. A man wandered around in a skimpy leather loincloth. A biker tromped the grounds in a pale pink, high-top Chuck Taylor Converse tennis shoes. A woman strutted in a turquoise and pink string bikini top that barely covered the essential areas, and tons of 20-somethings were decked out in Mardi Gras beads showing off their tan lines. The fashion police, if they had been here, would have had their work cut out for them. Fortunately, though, it wasn't all about fashion. It was more about fun. I wear whatever's comfortable, said the loincloth wearer, Jim Sparks of Cedar Rapids. Mostly, I hear innuendos while I wear this. Like, so, what are you wearing under there? Sparks said he made the leather scrap himself. <laughs> it showed off the tattoo of a crescent moon on his upper thigh. I definitely keep cool in this, he said, grinning. For the more bashful riders, the uniform was a basic standard. Tight bike shorts, a t-shirt or jersey, biking or tennis shoes, and some sort of eyewear or hat. Most riders said they thought style was just as important as comfort when it came to dressing for ragbri. I try not to ever wear the same jersey two days in a row, said Richard Kellis, 16, of Des Moines, who was sporting a blue and yellow jersey with black bike shorts and biking shoes. Kellis said he had four different jerseys, his favorite being a brightly colored one with his name of his team down the side. His other concerns, he said, were setting himself apart from the rest of the crowd, which he does by wearing a bandana printed with American flags, and finally, comfort. For some, keeping cool is top priority. Chris Nielsen, 17 of Des Moines, wore a bright orange and blue racing jersey with black bike shorts. He said he likes clothes that let the air come through. Style and comfort are important, but mostly I want to keep the sweat out of my eyes, Nielsen said, pointing to the white bandana tied around his forehead. Trends in attire could be spotted. All types of sunglasses shielded the eyes, but Oakley's streamlined shape was everywhere. Another hot item was the U.S. Postal Service bike jersey, modeled after the one American cyclist Lance Armstrong wears. Tie-dye shirts were common, as were Teva sport sandals. 12-year-old Zach Greenberg and Lori Greenberg, 46, both from Hanover, New Hampshire, said this was their second rag bright, and after last year's heat, they dressed cool and comfortable. We're having a great time. We're dressed comfortable and slathered in number 15 sunscreen, Lori Greenberg said from behind her tinted shades. It's been a great ride. Zach sported one of the coveted U.S. Postal Service jerseys, which he said it was a gift received from his mom Monday morning. Their companion, Skip Jenkin, 49, also of Hanover, said he dressed for comfort but still worked to achieve a stylish appearance. I wear Diodora bike shoes that don't pitch my wide feet, Jenkins said. I chose these rather austere shorts with a silver trapezoid on the side for today's hill ride, he said, smiling. Yes, both comfort and looks are important. So there you have it. Rag by riders, comfort and looks are important. And I love the evolution of rag by style where these riders are now wearing technical sporting equipment, including Oakley shades and bike shoes. And not of one of them talked about not wearing Lycra or spandex shorts. They're all different variations of that. And you can see the influence of the U.S. Postal Service cycling team where everybody, the hot jersey to wear is the Lance Armstrong jersey, where you really probably would not see any of those on the ride today or way fewer than you would in the 2000s. So I thought that was a cool look into some of the transitions of cycling style from the 80s to the 2000s. And I would be interesting to look into another article about the fashion of today now that it's 22 years later. Because um, I know things have changed even further to not only having the cycling clothes, but now they make cycling clothes in, say, Ragbright has a Hawaiian shirt, but it's a technical cycling shirt. So they have kind of merged the fun tie-dye feeling fashion into something that actually is going to wick your sweat and keep you cool on the ride. So it's just so interesting to 
think about how much more comfortable we can be with our clothing on the bike while still having a good time with it. I hope you enjoyed this look back into the fashions of Ragbri. Um, I would love to hear your suggestions for more themes on things I can do pair talks about because it was really fun to really focus in and not think so much about who wrote the article, but what the topic was. And um, yeah, I think I'm going to go pick out my next outfit for my bike ride coming up this weekend. Hmm. Should I wear the shorts with the cloud print on them or should I wear plain black shorts? And should I wear um, my pigtails jersey with the purple flowers or should I wear hmm so many choices well let's keep it simple and say just go bike well listeners that is it for this week we both want to thank you for tuning in to listen to the just go bike podcast and if you'd like to contact us with a comment about the podcast or maybe you have a topic in mind, you can reach us at justgobikepodcast at gmail.com or you can also follow us on social media at Just Go Bike on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast, especially if you're a fan. And if you have any extra time, pop on over to the Morphology Podcast for more bike adventure interviews. All right, that's a wrap. We'll be back next week. Until then, just, just go bike! bike.